what on the back evenator i'm buster and this week in toku we're going to be discussing what the hell is up with power month uh tons of common rider news apparently and where the fucking hell did high school hero subs go but before all that buster how has your week been uh it's been a week not like a bad week it's actually been pretty good today was pretty good has it been one week since you looked at me Turn your head to the side and said I'm crazy? All right, then. Uh, Yeah, how was... Since we... uh, Hey, cheap plug, we talked about anticipation for it on modular components, uh, and now it will be out on Friday, so everybody go listen to that. Buster, how was your first day back to school? It was mostly... (laughs) Buster's like, there were too many exposition scenes. Five out of ten. That's what I expect. And like, it's interesting exposition, but I'm like, I want like I'm more of an actor. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't like school time with twit. Yeah. For uh, for anyone who isn't aware, Buster is starting at a new school, and I am I am working at a school, and this is the first time either of us have experienced a active period of school at our respective schools. Yeah. How many times can you say school in a sentence? So like, I will just say. It was both not as bad as I expected it to be, and worse than I expected it to be, because that makes sense. But, uh, but other than that, my week's been pretty good. Very productive weekend, actually. Uh, I think I talked about that a little bit on components, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of irons in the fire right now for me creatively. But uh, most of all, uh, creatively, you guys need to help us be creative right here on Modular Media because that's the podcasting network uh, that this is broadcasted through. We are a creative co-op of four different YouTubers, so if you would be so kind, please head over to the YouTube, upload of this, give it a like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell in order to enable notifications, get every episode of This Week in Toku as we release them, and follow it on whatever podcasting platform you're already listening to it, so you can do that as well and listen on the go and all that fun kind of stuff. And if you want to just keep up with Modular in general, please follow us on Twitter at The Modular Media or join our subreddit r slash Modular Media. But that is all the shilling I need to do for this episode, so uh, shall we head into the news, Buster? Yeah, or first off, the shortest, like, franchise news. Power Rangers Lightning Collection. Yeah, we got two new Lightning Collection reveals this week, uh, which is kind of a big deal because one of them's figure 100 uh we got the reveal of the power rangers lightning collection mighty morphin ninja black and blue rangers uh these are new figures in the lightning collection of course they are based off of the uh, ninjetti costumes from both the uh 90s power rangers movie as well as the uh ninjetti costume appearance from season three there's actually three different heads to represent each look which is kind of a cool touch there's some alternate hands and i think no these are these are effects pieces we've gotten before so um and uh, they are going to be released as Target exclusives. They're actually sold out on Target.com already, uh, but they did stay up for like a couple of days, which is progress in Target's uh, stature. Uh, they're going, they're uh, apparently going to ship in January of next year. And the big kicker is, I'm pretty sure these are the first um, Lightning Collection to experience Hasbro's price hike of twenty six forty nine. I think the TMNT ones kind of suffered a bit of a price hike. Okay, I guess. Sorry, you were saying I missed that. Sorry, Pop the Chicken Nugget. Pop well. uh, <laughs> the Chicken Nugget while you were gone. Um, yeah, uh, I think the TMNT figures has a bit of price hike, but then again, those were deluxe two packs. And- yeah, I was kind of assuming like that's, oh, that's all like extra franchise tax and whatnot. But no, these are regular Lightning Collection releases. Granted, they're store exclusives, but store exclusives don't usually have a price hike. Um, but uh, yeah, if people weren't aware, this is the uh, price hike is basically due to all the shipping issues that pretty much every company in the world has been facing for the last year and change. Um, and it's just finally hitting Hasbro hard enough that we're seeing a lot of prices get hiked up, which does suck, but it's also like, what are you going to do about it? You can't change the way the economy is right now. I will say, before I get into the complaining, at least they didn't do KKK Tommy. I'm not even going to hide this. 
Yeah, that although now that they have this mold, that figure is probably coming. Oh no! Big yikes! Yeah, I mean, because like they're they're aside from a few Tampa graphing details and different alternate heads. These figures are nearly identical, which makes sense. This is a lot of new tooling, so they're probably going to want to get as much use out of the mold as possible. But uh, I'm going to be real honest. I'm not super interested in these figures. I think they look cool, and Hasbro has proven a lot in the last few years that they're really good at making six-inch ninja action figures. It's just I've never cared for these looks, so I'm not going to be picking them up. Yes. Now, out of, we have three ninjas. Actually, yeah, three if we count Alien. Mm -hmm. And we chose the Mighty Morphin Ninja original cast first. We could well, have had Ninja Steel, at least. I know Ninja Steel's bad, but, like, you know, the kids know ninjas. Well, you gotta print that money, bust. I get it. You know, it's sold out, but I'm just... I, we need to... But we also... We kind of need to train... Like, we need to, like, start building an audience outside of the MPR, you know? I, I agree with that, Um, but also just, like, the... There's the bigger issue here of, like... Okay, so Hasbro made a big deal out of, I think it was the month beforehand, uh, yeah. that August was going to be Power Month. And for the whole first week of August, we got all those TMNT reveals. Second week, we got Jack and shit. And then this week, these two figures are all we get. And we've also gotten some posters. But who gives a shit about posters? I'm here for the toys. Yeah, uh, we're just franchise news. They said franchise new year. I guess we're waiting for Power Rangers Day. Mm -hmm. They're teasing that they're gonna be doing something big on Power Rangers Day, but still, for something that was advertised as Power Month, it's felt more just like Hasbro's regular news cycle, but with extra branding. Yeah, we've had more Marvel Legend fan first Fridays, mm -hmm. Thursday, Which whatever. Which, you know, I can kind of understand because they're pushing on Marvel Legends HasLab right now, but also it's like, that's bad schedule. Yeah, that's really, you, you could have, like, just because a Power Rangers day and you're going to announce stuff on that day doesn't mean, well, let's make an entire month, even though we're just going to do Shill or Galactus figure with it. Uh, I mean, no, no, no ill will to Marvel Legends. Sure, you're all fine. People. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I pre-ordered a Galactus. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a new son in about five months. I think is how long it usually takes for Haslabs to ship. I don't know. This is the first time I'm actually back to Haslab. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, these figures look okay. It's just like the overall concept of Power Month is leaving me feeling a little lackluster because. Uh, yeah. To recap, so far nothing I'm interested in, uh, like actually interacting with, has been revealed. Like the turtles, I go, oh, that's cool, but I don't need it don't want it. The posters, I'm like, I don't give a shit about posters. And these, I'm like, okay, I can appreciate that from, like, a grand fleshing out of the line kind of perspective, but I ain't gonna buy these. More MMPR panda. Anyway. All right, let's move on to Sentai news. We've gotten uh, a few uh, bits of Sentai toy news this week. Uh, starting off with a new toy of Dai Denjin, uh, which is going to be an evolution set, uh, which is something Sentai does as anniversary releases from time to time. Basically, what this is, is it's a figure of the uh, Denji Tiger transport with the... Uh, untransformed die dungeon inside that you can pull out and it has a little bit of interactivity on its own and then there is a figure of die dungeon that has very limited posability and this is being done in celebration of the uh super sentai 40th anniversary of course yep i got not seen dungeon man and i really don't care about the design to be honest I mean, it's a cool classic design. It's it's just like, yeah, like you said, it's not something I'm super interested in. But if you are interested in it, it is uh, already up for pre-order on all your favorite sites and should be releasing February of next year. And it's going to run you... Yeah, dang it. Bang. That is going to... That is not right. What the hell? A lot of money. We'll, we'll say a lot of money. Google's being stupid tonight. Uh, but uh, let's move on to Zenkaiger Toy News, where, hey, they're doing more plushies for that show. Uh, we don't actually have physical photos of them, but we now see the uh, design mock-ups for 
uh, Zenkaiger plush Stacy, Stacyzer, and Flint, which I think is really cool. I, I love that they're fleshing out the cast and doing more than just the main Rangers. I really like how we're going to be getting the Stacyzer and Stacy plush. I kind of want us to, mm-hmm. to be honest. So. Yeah. Yeah. Flint looks cute. I might I might get her and Zox as like a pair if I ever find them together at a con. Yeah. Oh, that would be uh-huh. Yeah, I, I kinda put those they're plushies. Yeah. Yay, plushies. They exist. We're not exactly plushy people. I mean but, I, I, uh, I like I, I like plushies. I just don't know what else to say about plushies are they're, they're cool. Oh yeah, that's a good cheapy design. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Ooh. I I I'll get some big stuff that sure to make certain fans go ballistic. Oh, I already, like, when I got home tonight and I got on Twitter while I was eating dinner, half of my timeline was just people flipping their shit over this, uh, because we're getting new Go Kaiger keys, uh, as part of the Memorial Edition Mo Pirates release, we are getting a set of Ranger keys of Ranger Team leaders, not Red Rangers, leaders after that came after go kaiger so this set will be containing the red rangers from tokome sentai go busters zuden sentai kyoryuger russia sentai tokyuger shuriken sentai ninja dobutsu sentai juoger uchu sentai q ranger kate blue bomb ranger versus pata ranger uh Ryu soldier kira major and for key for zen kaiger we are getting a Zen Kaiser key. We're not getting a uh, Zen Kai Juren key yet, because I'm assuming eventually we will get a full team set for Zen Kaiser. Yeah, it, it, especially this ten Go Kaiser. Everyone's theorizing, okay, how's two Kaiser guy connected? But yeah, it's really cool. And apparently, it says the, these will will be featured in the Zen Kaiser mm-hmm. ten Go Kaiser. But yeah, that's it's cool. We we getting keys, baby. Yeah, I hope we get an all red change involving these, and like Marvelous turns into Lupon Red, and Joe turns into Patros uh, Nigo Sango. What is he? Uh, Ichigo. Ichigo. Yeah, that's right. He's a numbers. Yeah, I think like uh, it's like get, like Gokai Silver will do that. Go, you know, just the keys also we- look really good and really well detailed, especially. Zen Kaiser. I'm surprised how many of those little stripes they actually got on him. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe we'll get those mecha the, for the other Zen Kaiser, especially some tools of mecha that have appeared in Go Kaiser, like, Go Busters. And this news uh, just broke uh, the night we're recording this, so we don't exactly have release info for these yet, but they'll probably be coming uh, sometime around the same time as the Memorial Edition Mobirates. Because that would just make sense. It's brand synergy. Uh, and speaking of uh, synergy, uh, I don't know how to connect. I was just trying to make yeah. a transition there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but hey, speaking of transitions, yeah. uh, Common Rider Zero One's Statsuki Nakamaya, no, I think. Tatsuki Nakayama. Thank you. Uh, has come out as transgender. And if you didn't know, this was the actor that at the time of Zero One's filming was uh, gender fluid, I believe, Uh, non-binary. Yeah, and they portrayed Naki back then, but uh, they are now a he, and and he is making a photo book based around uh, uh, presenting themselves as a male, which is is pretty cool, kind of a big deal to have a tokusatsu actor come out as transgender, because I don't believe it's happened before. Yeah, and also, uh, he's Arrow. Arrow. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, yeah. good for him. And uh, congrats to him. All the best on his future endeavors. Yeah, really hope he can come back to writer sometime, either as yeah. Naki or... Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, and then uh, some production news. Shin Kamen Rider has begun filming, everybody. Yeah, that's right. Shin Ultraman ain't even out yet, and Anno's already moved on to the next thing. To be fair, Shin Ultraman is probably done. It's just, well, we're on the way. I don't kill you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. I feel like this thing was just announced a couple weeks ago, and already it's going into pr- production. And we've kind of gotten our first look at it because uh, the movie's Twitter tweeted out a photo of the new Tachibana Tachibana 
Racing Club logo, which, if you're not aware, is the uh, the same logo that becomes the insignia for Common Rider number one. And it looks a lot more mechanical and honestly kind of reminds me of Chase from Common Rider Drive, Machine Chaser. Yeah, um, it, it kind of gives me a bit more a creepy vibe, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But like, that's but, probably what the movie is going for, too. Yeah, I'm trying to play into a bit more of the psychological horror of, like, you know, being a cyborg man. Yeah, get in, get into some of that body horror stuff that would occasionally crop up in the original series. Like, the those moments where Hongo accidentally hurts a person, and then there's this overwrought uh, monologue about how Hongo Tekeshi is a man who stands alone against evil, and then the next episode he's just chilling in the race club with Tachibana and all these babes. Dang. I mean, that's just life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, I'm excited for the movie. I'm, I'm glad it's coming sooner than expected, honestly. And, uh... Yeah, that's cool, but uh, now it's time to get back into toy news, Common Rider toy news, everybody, because uh, Sh- Shinshoku Seiho Common Rider O's Super Tato Ba is happening. Do not have final form debates in the comments, I beg you. <laughs> yeah, uh, n- no, no final form debates in the comments. That's 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 a new rule. Um, yeah. Because uh, this is a movie form. I'm just. <laughs> Stating a fact there. This is a form that only appears in a movie. A movie that I haven't even seen, honestly. It was really good. Like, it was? Yeah, it's very good. Like I think like it's what people call the best crossover. Oh wow. Oh yeah, okay, Mega Max. Yeah, I've gotta I've gotta see that at some point. I've heard people talk about it. The thing that's always stopped me is I just haven't seen f- two out of the three series that are represented in it. Uh, which one? Fours? Uh I have not seen fours or double. Uh, it's on my to-do list. Don't leave comments. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably just... Uh-huh. Uh, but no, as a figure of this design, it looks incredibly good. Like, um, yeah. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. I think the actual suit for Super Tato Ball looks like ass, but this looks like a pretty cool action figure. That's a hot take. <sighs> what, can, what can I say? I'm a, I'm a sucker for plastic hand candy. But uh, this is... Sorry? Sorry, like, this next one, okay, apparently it did not get announced a while ago. Yeah, because uh, we also have an announcement for Common Rider Metsubo Jinrai getting an SH Figure Arts release. I think the thing you're thinking of is the fact that we got a Figure Arts for uh, Leon Arkland. Oh, okay, yeah, probably, because, like, this is very... Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I but... do like the little, like, picture where it's, like, you know, where it represents the end of the film with Metsubo screaming into the abyss. Yeah, I, I, I hope... Nightmare fuel. I don't think we will, but I hope we get that diorama piece at some point, because that's really cool looking. Oh, sick, but like, I don't think... Yeah, cool figure. Yeah, no. yeah it's it's super cool that they're making this design, too, because it is a lot of original tooling. But uh, moving on to Kamen Rider Saber news, because we cover that briefly. Um, yeah. The Kamen Rider Saber Ultimate Seiken set has been announced, which is basically the pointy boy... But it's big now. You get yeah, actual the, size the sword, pointy boy. The sword driver, but like the sword was accurate to the show, which, you know, that's pretty cool. It also comes with the blades and a spada, a signia, as you could put on the weapon. Which is sick. Yeah. I got it. Cool. The article I have in the fucking uh, topic list here, which will be down in the video description along with the rest of the news links, there's a meme in the photo I gallery. Who? Okay, what the hell, to- what the hell, Ben Murdoch of Tokusatsu Network? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but but no, this toy looks pretty cool, especially if you're a saber fan. Like a- actual size swords were a very rare thing in Common Rider up until recently, and it makes sense that we're we're getting adult collector releases of the saber swords that are actual toys now because saber is so heavily blade themed. Yeah. Um and. Uh, you know, uh, in addition to that, uh, I, I assume this ties into the final somehow. Yeah, the this, com- is the final, this is the final episode form. Uh, Wonder Almighty, uh, Wonder all the Wonder Almighty Ride Book will be available to purchase. Uh, this Yay. is basically for like I'll get into this more to like when we get to the episode, but this is basically like uh, all the power. Like, let's the Toma use all of his ride books, and also does like that realizing hopper thing of oh it's his base but like you know now it's like he has all the powers of all the books he's collected throughout the show 
I see. I feel like mm-hmm. this trend they're doing for Final. I know people like go by to where it's like you got Final Form and then you got like power up that lets them that enhance the base for the final battle. You know? I love how this book like folds out both ways and then there's a little extra like sign that flips out on one of the sides. That's hilarious. It, it, it's probably the bulkiest saber book they've done. Uh, I could see that easily breaking if a kid's just running around with it on their oh, waist. Oh, it's a premium Bandai, I think. Hmm. Let me check. Is it? No, I know. I don't. I don't see any presented. I'm pretty sure it's like a more of a collector's item. All right. Well. All right. Well, that is all the news that's fit to print this week. So, shall we get into the episodes? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'll well, get to why I'm like so. Uh, Ultra Red Trigger, New Generation Tiga, Episode Five, Akito's Promise. What did you think, Zach? Uh, I thought this episode was all right, but honestly, that's 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 an emergent problem with Trigger. Like this whole series starting to feel kind of mid. I gotta admit. Okay, yeah, I'll get into, like I'm, yeah, I'm just yeah, and like honestly, like it feels like we're we should be focusing on like the whole team, but we're only focusing on like Kengo, Akito, Akito's sister. I keep forgetting her Yuna. Name. Yuna. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the one who like did like a t- slap to the villain. Which, uh, it was cool. It was like a cool moment couched in a bunch of weirdness because like the villain that's chasing after her isn't the one that was simping for her. It's the guy who just wants to fight Trigger. That was such a weird choice. I guess they just want to change it up, especially because the next episode. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, then again, uh, you know, Yuna probably has like a thing with Dark Giants. Yeah, she's got the ancient goddess in her. Yeah, that that's what they're probably chasing after. Um, but yeah, like really the thing I, I kind of feel like we're kind of going a bit like this I say issue ahead of episode four. This is a little better than episode four, but like we're just kinda of like repeating the same thing and I'm like, oh, okay, well can we get some variety? Can we focus on the other characters? See what like Oh, a monster is attacking, and we have to deal with it. And yes, I know that's like the plot of every Toku show. You don't have to get on to me in the comments, but like, you can shake that up. You can do different kinds of character stories within that. There wasn't much spice. It felt Mm -hmm. like very textbook. Like, Akito's backstory was interesting, and I like how they handle the whole, like, okay, you're suspended. I like, I like that aspect of it. But, like, I felt like Kengo trying to connect to him should have had more to it. Like, it, it really felt rushed that he was just like, all right, I guess we're buds. We just had an Akito-focused episode, like, we haven't even, like, what, like, the thing that makes characters like Kengo, who's, like, all, like, trying to make people happy, the thing that makes them interesting is them interacting with other characters, like, a variety of characters. See the different effects they have on all sorts of characters. Uh, yeah, we need to we need to get some one offs up in this bitch. Yeah, we need let's focus on muscle guy, tech lady, like the the, the mustache man, <laughs> commander man. Yeah, that's his name now. <laughs> yeah, uh, but like yeah, let, let's we have all these characters. Uh, like you know, a thing that kind of stuck out to me and Trigger when like all these castings were being revealed, I was like, man, this is kind of a this is kind of a stuffed cast. It's clear mm-hmm. that you know maybe they weren't prepared to do a stuffed cast if we're only going to focus on three characters. So much so to to the point that, like, the villains are only... We're only getting, like, one villain per episode, even though there's a trio of villains and a rogue villain. Yeah, we, we have, like... we could, There's so many dynamics you can do, and it just feels like... I, I know it's we're only first five episodes out of, like, 25, but still, just... Other Ultraman shows, they have stronger five episodes. Than this. We're kind of comparing mm. it. So. And, like, to compare it to one of the other shows we're going to be talking about tonight... Remember back when we were, like, eight episodes into Zenkaiger and we felt like we were halfway through the show? Yeah. Like, why am I not feeling that, starting to feel that now with Trigger? That That's my big thing, is like, okay, I've seen other toku shows in the last year do better than this. I've seen, yeah. I've seen the previous Ultraman show do better than this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just... And like I said, it's not bad. The show is still competently written and directed, and the effects are great as always, but there's no, there's no spice. It's bland. It's mid. Yeah, um, I just hope, like, especially with a series like Tiga, which is homaging, which is, like, such a beloved series, I kind of feel like, you know, being a mid is, might be even worse than being memorably bad. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, 
high school heroes wasn't sub this week. No ill will to the suburb. You got things to do, but you yeah. know. we'll catch up next week. Yeah, I and mean, it's still a great show. So we we have something to look forward to. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to the third high school hero. Yeah. Or fourth, or whatever number they're introducing in episode three. I lost count. Yeah. All right. So, Kamen Rider Saber, episode 47, the story finale. Finale. I don't know what they're going to call the Revice crossover. Hope Cross Up Bridge when we get to it. Uh, it was not a perfect finale. It was pretty good. So, like, what happens is so, like, like, all the people are dying. The entire world is going to basically. And so, like, basically, as a last resort, Luna. Like, to- Toma's friend, she turns into the almighty Wonder Book, and, like, him, Blades, and Espada, they all transform, and they all beat up Storius, and it's a pretty cool fight using all the books, Almighty's playing, it's hype shit. And then, like, the second half of the episode comes, where it's like, they kind of do a fake-out death of Toma, because, like, basically the entire world is ending, and then it's like, you know, the, like, and Blades and Espada are cradling Toma in his arms, and you get what I mean. Like, and they're like, all it's all sad, and then like the screen turns to black, and then like Toma's like in this void of black, but like then there's all these messages from like fans uh, about stories and stuff, uh, which it's really nice. Um, you know, like uh, apparently it's, like a couple people on Twitter like were saying, oh, like that's nice. It, it, it's very it's very wholesome stuff. You know, getting the fans involved in the final and like a storied way. Uh, and then like and then like you know it's it's really wholesome. Uh, you get, like, the Evangelion thank you, everybody. <laughs> Not, like, exactly Evangelion. Um, and then, like, we cut to, like, present day, where everything is fine, except a bunch of people are missing, and Toma's, like, seemingly dead. And then Toma just kind of, like, he's in Wonder World, which is, like, the other world. And then he kind of just talks with, like, all the dead people, like, that died, and just be like, oh, yeah, um, I'm gonna piss off now. <sighs> Okay, that's not exactly what happens, but it basically just comes back to life, and all the people who died are back. It's like if, like, you know, at, at the end of X Aid, where it's like, you know, like, oh, all those, we still got work to do. It's like if just we did that. It sounds like a finale that would really piss me off, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I, I still think there's good elements to it, like especially the the messages, in my opinion. But like, uh, yeah, I can totally see why people were upset with this. Um. Oh uh, yeah, maybe the epilogue will be better, especially because you know we're getting like some of the we're wrapping up some character moments in the epilogue, like uh, with Espada, and also getting the Revice cameo. So that's gonna be fun. Okay. Yeah, Saber overall, is, it, I'm gonna do a full review on my channel, but like I, I really like these. It has flaws, but like I'm, the good stuff is so good, I'm willing to look past them. Interesting. And I talked for way too long, so I'll kick kick it off to you with Kikai Sentai Zenkai, your episode 24, Invasion Complete. Now, how do we fix that? This episode was just fun. This is just some good fun. Like, it, you could, you could, you could fucking yell filler all day, and I'd be like, "Yeah, but it was fun." And it's a standard Japanese plot of the week, and they did it fairly well. Like, it, it's one of those things where it's like, "Yeah, I don't get all the references, but I'm enjoying it because it looks like the actors are just having a good time shooting this." Because the premise is just. Summer Vacation Monster makes everybody go on summer vacation for, like, 20 minutes. And then in the last four minutes, they snap out of it and have the monster fight. I don't, like, don't like the placement to this. Because this just can't... I get it, like, you know, it's supposed to be a Breaver episode after the Say Caesar battle. But we kind of have a lot of filler right at the moment. Not, like, episodic. Like, it's still a good episode. I just wish it was placed either later or early. Because at the moment, that was Zenkai, I feel like, okay, can we get some plot development? You can see that. But also, like, this is this is fairly standard Toei plotting, too. Like, remember yeah. in Gaim when they would have, like, these massive plot development episodes? And then the next episode, it would be like, here's a tie-in to fucking Kikaida reboot. Yeah. Well, to be fair, like... Okay, I can't be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be fair. Buster Corp 2021. Yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is a funny episode. I like, like, you know, got to see the key kinoids in, like, gear. And, like, I love seeing, we got to see some characterization from one of the villain generals where he just gets, like, super pissed. It's like, why do you make everyone go on vacation? That's just stupid. Like, that was great. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Barashita getting mad at all his troops was the best thing. Yeah, uh, so, it, so it was, it, like, it, I understand the situation with the actor. It's a whole bunch of fucked up shit. But, like, it, it's weird that Gage is there and just not talking. Like, I'd rather them not have Gage be there with Bokuwawas. 
Yeah, that would. I mean, like, I mean, to be fair, I guess it's just like a prop and deck sometimes because the boy still. It's kind of given recent events. Uh, it's, yeah, it's 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 a whole weird, messy thing. Um, I don't know. I feel like my favorite thing about Toku this week was just seeing. Like, it's weird because I don't. I don't find the actress attractive, but Flint's actress just keeps doing the cutest fucking shit in this show. Like, yeah. Flint, Flint was so fucking cute in this episode with her and the, her and the boys cheering Zox on at the beginning there. Yeah, I, I and don't then, know what was up with that flag. I don't know. They decided, oh, like, what flags? <laughs> yes. We're on the USS flag now. Um, and there were, uh, and, and the summer games, well, well, some of the stuff I didn't understand because cultural differences, all that was, was fun. Yeah, it was just a fun episode. Kind of wish, like, I'm not happy with its placement in the show, man, because I'm just kind of, like, thirsting for plot developments, but that's really more for... Thirsting for plot developments. <laughs> that's the next Buster Core bark. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's, Stop making that's me what, into a meme! That's what you gotta change the server to after Power Muff is over. Okay, yeah, just Thursday for plot. I mean, <laughs> like to be fair, like September is a pretty dry month. Oh uh, yeah, because is uh yeah Power Cons or not Power Con? Fucking uh, has has time until October. Hasbro Pulse Con is at the end of October, so it's it might be a pretty it it pretty pretty probably yeah dry news month coming up. Oh shit. Yeah. Also, uh, just before we end, uh, so apparently there's some rumors that Dino Fury episodes might leak. Uh. How are we gonna like? What's the plan for that? There's rumors of leaks. Yeah, that does not sound legitimate at all to me. Oh my god! Well, like, there's a possibility, like a high probability, that like, cause of people like other countries getting Dino Fury at the moment, that we could be seeing episodes, new episodes that no one has ever seen uh, surface online. We might see new powers that have never been seen before oh on this earth. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta resist. You, you want to be distanced from Mega Force sucks, but you keep referencing Mega Force. I'm, Mega Force and Mega Force sucks are very different. Okay. Completely different plot lines, very different universes. One of them, at least Mega Force's story finished. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, if shit leaks, I will look at it, but I don't know if we should cover it on this show. Yeah, I'm at, we'll probably wait. Yeah, I'll probably look at it just because I like being relevant. Because I can't, I must have my Dino Fury fix. But we'll probably wait. Like, if you're wondering about our thoughts on leaked episodes, we'll probably give like a spoiler. Like, here's what well, I think we could give like a spoiler free brief. Just like, oh, it was good, it was bad, eh. Or, or like, and then we'll just move on. It comes out in our cut. Yeah, so when, when the leaks happen, we'll go, this episode was good, we'll go, this episode was bad, and we'll go, this episode was Chad, and we'll move on. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of moving on, we're at the end of the episode, Buster. So do you want to tell everybody who you are and where they can find your content on the worldwide internet? I'm Buster Corp. I do videos. Uh, I am currently in the process of making a Common Nighter Saber analysis. So if you want my podcast a full show, make sure to subscribe to the Buster Corp channel. I upload re scripted reviews, but more people like me for my show. And I'm the back humanator, and the best word I could possibly pick to describe myself at this point is I am an internet personality. It's about it. It's only slightly less bland than I am a content creator. If you want to see some of my my brand, you can find it at youtube.com slash the vacuuminator spelled T-H-E-B-A-C-U-U-M-I-N-A-T-O-R. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram. It's basically the same at you might have to throw an underscore in there. But uh yeah, that's gonna do it for this week in Tokusatsu folks. We'll see you next week when we discuss Whatever happens that week in Tokusatsu.